Hey, welcome to another video in the ASP.NET series. We're trying to build an application here for the web, and the process right now we're working on is authentication. As you can see, we have a login form. In this video, we're going to present the user with more than just a string for a login success message or a login fail message. We're going to create custom views. All right, let's check out the app as it was at the end of the last video. I'm going to put in the word admin and the password, which is secret. And now I have a login success. Well, obviously a single string is informative, but we want to make it a custom view. All right, let's return to the login controller. Instead of returning a string, we're going to return a view. So the string returns are no longer valid. What we need to do is put in place a view or a reference to a view that we're going to make in just a minute. So now if there is a successful login, we're going to direct the browser to a page called login success. So we'll have to make that view. It doesn't exist yet. We're also going to use the user model data so that we'll tell the uh, user what user they've logged in as. If they fail, we'll create another view called login failure and we'll display that every time they make a password mistake. Okay, so now it's time to create this view called login success. We can just do a right click in the code and choose add view. Okay, so now when we create this view, let's give it a name. We'll call it login success, which is exactly what it matches with in the text that I've already written. And now for the template, I'm going to choose the item called details. So details is a form that just is meant to show the properties of a class. Previously, we used something called create, which was more like a create a new user form. So this details will just show the details of the user that's logged in. And then for the class model, we will pick the user model as our object. All right, so the code is already generated for us as soon as we click the OK button. Let's look at some of the details. First of all, the important line, number one, shows you what kind of object is being displayed on this form. So since we selected user model in our template, it put it here as the first line. The title is called login success. Now, what kind of form is this? Well, you can see that it's an H4, so that's somewhat of a headline. And then the items are just uh, labels and uh, text items. And so that is our first form. Now there's going to be some links here for editing and back to list. So we will probably have to implement this later, but we'll leave it here for now. So I'm gonna save this and test it out. Now we get an error because we have not created the failure message yet. So we went to login slash login. Let's delete the second login. And this one should work. It should show us the login page. Now, as long as we enter the successful password, we should get the successful view. So admin and secret are my passwords. Now, this time, as you can see, we have a view that came back. This looks much prettier than the other string that was just one line. Now, the template automatically added an edit button, which probably doesn't work, and then the back to list. Let's see what happens if we enter an incorrect password. So now we get the failure again, just like we did when we first launched the app. So we don't have the failure message yet. Let's go create that. So a good place to do the failure message is to go back to the login controller. And down here in the line that says return the view of login controller, let's right click and add a new view. For this case, I'm going to leave it without the model because we don't want to actually tell the user where they failed. So we'll just say a message that's going to be generic. Let's go ahead and choose add. So login failure simply produces an H2. Notice there is no model in line number one. So there is no way that you can tell it which username they used. So let's save this and try to run it again. So now let's navigate to the login form. We'll put in a username that does not work. So not admin and then we'll get a failure message. Notice it's nicely formatted. This fits into the template that came with the default installation of the application. So we have login failure and now we have login success. 
So briefly, what we did in this video was we changed this return value of our controller from a string to a view object, or action result object. And we are going to return two different views, one that says success and one that says failure. We had to create those views, and so they should be listed here in the login failure and the login success area. So that's the new code. In the next video, we're going to increase the ability of the application to accept multiple users. So we're going to have to create a database and access it using the class called SecurityDAO. So that's coming right up.